We have our favorite designer, Scott Dean, uh, is joining us from HGTV Home Design Studio by Bassett. And uh, today he's going to simplify our lives and all of giving us all of this great knowledge regarding fabrics because there's a lot to know, there's right? There's hours and hours and hours. You and I <laughs> can talk about fabrics. Last week it was upholstery. We learned a lot there. This yeah. week it's uh, fabrics. So. Yeah, what goes, with it, what, what goes with the upholstery once yes. you select the, uh, the item you want. Now we have to put fabric on it. And we just said we were going to talk about fabrics today and try to teach you a little bit about fabrics, but there's so much to know. We're going to give you just the basics, only the basics of fabrics today. Which is a lot. Which is going to be a <laughs> lot, yeah. Uh, a lot of times I like to tell people a little bit about fibers and how uh, and where they come from, just so you have a little bit of knowledge. So you have three sources of fibers. You have animal fibers, which would be you know, like your wools, wools. your silks, mm -hmm. and your like mohair or your cashmere. So all those would be made from, from uh, animal sources. And then you have plant sources, which would be flax, which makes linen. Mm -hmm. and and you have sisal, cotton, which of course everybody's very familiar with cottons, and then bamboo, which is the new sustain sustainable uh, fiber that we ha we uh, that we Do are. Do you get a lot of people coming in wanting the more earth friendly type of? I mean, does that, does that make a difference to a lot of a lot clients? of A lot of times it does when, when they say, is it sustainable or whether or not is, uh, they don't usually use the term organic as much mm -hmm. with fibers, wh with fabrics, but a lot of times uh, the source where it comes from is because there's allergies, a lot of allergies in the home and whether or not you can um, have certain fabrics or content of fabric. Uh, is very important okay. to people. And then the last one, of course, is synthetics. And synthetics has been developed a lot more over the last few years because we're using it more and more and more in, um, in durability of fabrics and durability of things like carpet. So you have your polyesters, your acrylics, your nylons, your olefin, and then probably the most common one now is polypropylene, which is probably the most durable. Okay. That, um, I was just going to say, does that, um, so it affects durability, but does it also affect kind of the look of the fabric to the different types? It does, and and what is, how it's woven. So a lot of times when you get a good strong polypropylene fabric, it's only going to be in a kind of a cross weave. You're not going to see it like in a printed fabric, or okay. you're not going to see it in a more delicate fabric. So that that's going to affect what how the fabric is actually made. Okay. Sure. And then we talk about the different types of fabrics, which we could go on, on and on and on about different types of fabrics whether it's velvet, whether it's um, a damask or chintz or wool or a, um, a, a woven fabric. So there's a lot of different types of fabrics that um, come into play when you're talking about um, upholstery. Mm -hmm. uh, we we uh, also have printed fabrics and whether or not they're woven printed fabrics, whether they're screen printed over the top. So there's lots of different ways that fabric can be made in multiple layers. And that affects, of course, the durability and the price. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and the price, of course. Of course. <laughs> so how do you break down what fabric is going to be best? Because you, you want to know, you know, wearability, right. uh, maybe a location, how much of an area is going to be, you know, is it a larger piece of furniture sure. or a smaller piece? And, well, a lot of times what we, we usually start talking about the most durable fabric because people ask for that a lot, whether they have pets, whether they have children, mm -hmm. or whether they think they're going to spill or whether it's high traffic use. And the one that we go to always is this Revolution fabric. This is called Revolution by Bassett, and it is polypropylene. It is virtually indestructible, so they say. Okay. And you see here that there's several uh, weaves and several um, colors in within that the different uh, weaves. So this, this grouping here has four colors. This one has three. This one has like four here. And it's um, extremely durable. Um, it, uh, it, it, it's antimicrobial. It, it doesn't stain. And that's because the fibers themselves have been surrounded with a uh, protection when they're actually woven versus a topical protection. I'm going to talk about more okay. about that later, okay. about okay. How, how topical protections can help you for, for durability. So that's Revolution Fabric Polypropylene um, from uh, from Bassett. There's a lot of other ones out there from other um, other uh, manufacturers or sourcings, of okay. course. And then um, the the uh, probably the next thing is different patterns we talk about. Here's the, um, this is a cut cut velvet here where it's woven velvet then it's been cut either by laser or by the machine cut. Um, this one has the same thing. You can see the velvet strie, the striés in this velvet right here. This is an embossed velvet here where you get uh, a texture and pattern. So this, th this is a more subtle type of because you kind of get a design Correct. in there but it's a little more right. subtle. 
And then with velvet, you get nap too. So you're going to get mm -hmm. a lot of different color variation. With do you, the, with do you try to uh, recommend maybe some of your larger pieces to go with something that doesn't have quite as much pattern to it? Uh, and then maybe the smaller or accent That's pieces? That's generally what the, we're doing now. We can call it a feature chair or a side chair. Depends on the personality, I'm sure, and too. And keep your big pieces maybe with, with a more neutral. And then add, add accent pillows, kind of like what we did mm -hmm. in the studio to right. kind of enhance the uh, more solid, larger piece. So yeah, we, we, a lot of times we go for the solids first and then add the pattern. Now there's there's we have 800 uh, plus fabrics to choose from, <laughs> and we only that's have two what, minutes that's, left. That's in, the, that's in the hanging. In the books, you can see we have tons to choose from, lots and lots of uh, patterns to choose from. How do you uh, make this books. so it's not so overwhelming for somebody? A lot of times we start by talking about the usage, and then we'll break it down to uh, what the type is we should start with, and then we'll add back in the patterns. We always start with more of a basic, and then work in the patterns because if you're trying to talk about everything, it gets too overwhelming. Right. And then the other thing I talk about a lot is that make sure that your pattern, if you're looking at a sample size this big, the actual piece might be this big. You got to make sure that you're... Because oh, it's a little deceiving then. <laughs> you want to see it in a, a bigger scale. And this one actually, you know, might not look like a bird, but then the fabric, it comes out and there's oh. a bird in it. You may not be wanting that. <laughs> so that you got to make sure... That's a little abstract <laughs> make, graphic, right? Make sure you're not just seeing a small... Uh, part of it. The other thing That's I want to brief point. talk on real briefly is is that that there are fabrics that are very very expensive and why these are very expensive fabrics. They're woven overseas a lot of times. They have multiple layers to them. Uh, they may have a designer name attached to them. They can go upwards to three and four and five hundred dollars a yard. Wow! I know. So, so what would you do? You use these sparingly. It's kind of nice to have right. that, but maybe use them in a, yeah, on a smaller scale. Yeah, an accent pillow or or a, a, a lumbar pillow. In fact, it's what an interesting thing is they sample them with the actual grommet in the middle so you can't use them actually for, oh, for a project. Oh, what fun is that? Like, we can still use them for you, a project, you, as you know. He's you my make, supplier of all of You make a button out of it. Yeah. I know you can figure that one out. That's, <laughs> that's easy. And then the last thing to touch on is the um, cleanability and what how they're tested. And what you're going to find mostly is people talking about double rubs. And I wanted to tell you what double rubs are. So they put it on a machine. A double rub is when the machine goes like this, one, two. That's a one double rub okay and that's an abrasion test and as it gets up into 15,000 of those then then it will actually say a lot of times on the label that it has been tested for so many double rubs and as you oh, get above okay. 15,000 you're getting into heavier duty um, usage mm -hmm. when you get to 30,000 you're into commercial, commercial. use right okay. so when you see that on there double rubs that's kind of what it means there are other tests of it that are done on them but that's the most common one that people will see and ask okay so. well, and next Next week, he's going to come back and he's going to share with us uh, some. We're going to actually test some fabrics and help fabrics. you know get some. If you have stains and things and what works, what doesn't. That's right. Whether the Teflon works, whether the polypropylene works on its own, we're going to actually try to see if we can stain them and clean them out. Yeah, that'll be great. Lots of good information here. If you want to find out more, go to hgtvdsm.com. Stop into his studio. Very friendly faces in there to help you with everything. They've got some great things on display to take a look at. Scott, thank you very much for coming in thank again you. today. We look forward to having you on next week. I do have some stain issues that I'm hoping you can help me with so uh, <laughs> we'll see what we'll we can see. do we'll see that's right <laughs>